Good morning, good morning, or good afternoon, according to whenever you're watching this, or maybe even good evening. I'm Lisa Jones, and I teach engineering technologies, and actually I teach electrical engineering technology courses and computer engineering technology courses. Here at Southwest, we have um, engineering technology, which ha includes mechanical engineering technology, architectural engineering technology, civil engineering technology, electrical engineering technology, and computer engineering technology. So if it's got technology in the name, we got it. So you think of Southwest as your number one destination for engineering technology courses. And what I want to talk to y'all about today is the opportunity that a high school students have of taking our courses and getting a technical certificate in engineering technology. And each one of the programs that I just mentioned has a certificate program. And that certificate program has five or six courses and I'm most familiar with the electrical and the computer engineering technology certificate programs. And a lot of you might say, well, I don't even know what technology is. Technology is all around us. You know, you got your cell phone, you got your computer, all that stuff. That's all technology, of course. Everybody knows that. Technology applies to almost every job out there. So even if you don't go into engineering technology, when you knowledge that you get from the technical certificate program will apply to whatever job you get. When I go to McDonald's for lunch and order my hamburger, the person at the, at the counter, they're punching in the number. Guess what they're using to punch in my order? A computer! And guess what helps know how that computer works? Engineering technology courses. So it all applies. And the other thing is, too, with taking the engineering technology courses, it helps you learn how to troubleshoot, how to solve problems, how to get things working. That's the goal. But just to give you a level and to put it in terms that maybe you can relate to a little better is uh, if you're a, a scientist like a physicist or a chemist but a physicist in particular so if you have a this is a copper pipe nothing special about it uh, if i drop this this is an alligator clip that we use in our building our circuits if i drop it through this copper pipe it's just going to fall right through and I missed it. Anyway, that's the, 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 it just falls right through. All right, here's a magnet. Here's the same copper pipe. Nothing. Put the magnet through, what's going to happen? Where is it? There it is. Unfortunately, since you're not here with me, you can't see it fall through. But what happens is instead of just dropping straight down, the magnet kind of floats down the pipe. Engineer looks at that and says, that is something neat. I should be able to make some money on this. I'm sure most of you have heard about the flashlights that don't require any batteries. So what, this is the same theory. This is flashlight is built on the same theory. Here's the, here is the magnet. It's a really heavy duty magnet. This blue wire here is the uh, copper wire similar to our pipe. And then what happens is there's an LED in here. There's a capacitor in here which you probably can't see, but it's a capacitor that is, acts like a battery. So it stores up charge. So as I'm moving the magnet back and forth, it's generating current, building up charge on the capacitor. And then we have a flashlight. Now this isn't the best flashlight. I'd hate to have to be in a cave and depend on this light, but it does work and it is a flashlight. And this actually has quite a bit of, of engineering principles scientific principles using it, and it's a good example of showing the levels of expertise needed. You have to understand the concept, you know, and for instance, and in engineering, we might get into it, the capacitor, the equation for how the capacitor charges up and stuff, and in engineering technology, which is what we teach at Southwest, we just say, okay, look, it takes you so many seconds to charge up that capacitor, and that's, just get the idea that the capacitor stores charge and then it discharges as you, as, as you burn the light. And now the technical certificate doesn't have, we have an introductory math class that all the technical certificates uh, take. And in fact, that's usually the first course that we have the high school students take. And it's really not hard math, but it gives you the, the basic fundamentals that you need for all your other technology courses. And it's actually a lot of review of your high school math. So, to wrap this all up, how many courses for a technical certificate? Good, it's six courses for a technical certificate, and four or five of them will apply directly towards your associate's degree. And 
with all of that, to wrap this all up now, if you have any questions, come see me at Southwest. I'm Lisa Jones, Engineering Technology, in the Fulton Building. And I want to see you soon at Southwest because Southwest is your best choice.